Hello, I'm Ollie and I'm part of the Huawei team in London. The 2021 Mobile Broadband Forum has brought Huawei and partners from around the world to the city of gold, Dubai. Over two days, delegates have exchanged ideas, seen the scale of technological progress, as well as gained insights into future trends. I've gone to find out from a few attendees what their main takeaways from this year's MBBF have been, as well as how they envision using what they've learnt to improve connectivity back home. So what have you found uh, most interesting about MBBF this year? I think uh, there was one room that we went into talked about the future. I think that was quite exciting to know uh, what's happening. You know, we're talking about 5G, 6G now, uh, you know, in the near in the future. Uh, a lot about storage, a lot about the network, a lot, a lot about, um, you know, high capacity um, servers and so on. So for me, it's been, uh, it's, it's great for me to learn a new skill and learn more about the ecosystem that supports uh, m as a fintech. Now you're a company based in uh, Kenya, operating the same, several countries. What have you seen today that makes you think about where you can take your company going forward? I think first is uh, uh, we're in seven, so seven countries. And we're looking to expand to more countries, but also uh, looking to expand uh, our products and services, but also looking at putting our um, our, our architecture uh, on cloud, which means if I have it on cloud, then somebody in Mozambique should be able to connect. So their connectivity issues become uh, really important to us. And we look at what technologies are there uh, to ensure that uh, whenever a transaction happens, it's actually real time. So how important, slightly obvious question, but how important is creating the structure to a fintech company in Africa? Right? I, I think that's that's a, that's the most that's the biggest that's the anchor of what of, of it all. Uh, the tech platform enables us to uh, expand our target addressable market. I can from the right tech architecture that I can expand to more more, more countries. I can expand uh, to more different products and services. I can launch new. Um, I can take advantage of the smartphone to launch new apps and new mini programs uh, and make you know, MPESA the largest fintech and digital ecosystem in Africa. And uh, you know, thinking about Africa, geographically it's quite a, well first it's a wonderfully diverse continent, mm. but also geographically, you know, it's quite spread out, people are very placed all over the place. Um, a lot of talk over the last days about green tech and getting, levelling the digital divide. How important is that to you as a Kenyan, but also as someone in fintech? No, I think you know it's, it's uh, we are aligned to the SDG goals. We are a purpose-led organization, and we believe that uh, if the society is successful, then MPESA will be successful. So it's really important that uh, new technologies, green technologies, are, uh, uh, you know, uh, are implemented. It's great to see a solar-powered site. Uh, some of those have been rolled out in Kenya by by Huawei, and it's it's great to. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, green technologies are embraced and. Uh, we know we drive financial inclusion, technology driving, uh, uh, narrowing the, the, um, the digital divide. So those two are really important uh, for us and that digital divide is, is, is narrowed. And also as a fintech, we benefit in terms of that. If there are more smartphones, then we also benefit in terms of um, how we can provide better customer experience to our customers. So if those infrastructures can hit those rural communities in Kenya outside of the big cities, that's just great news for you. Yeah, it's fantastic because you see, even MPESA, we are in the rural communities, with, with, and, and, and most of the devices in the rural communities are 2G phones. So, if then uh, uh, we can get 3G, 4G into those rural communities, get the right handsets into those, uh, into those communities, then we can empower customers uh, access more uh, information, whether it's on weather, whether it's on the soil content, whether it's on uh, new services on MPESA. So, it's really important that uh, we continue to expand um, access to the rural areas. Final question, you know, uh, Kenya, a lot of countries, like all countries around the world, but obviously Kenya and Africa in general, there's quite a big divide between rich and poor. How do you see good infrastructure and indeed the use of fintech levelling the haves and the haves not? No, I, I think, you know, w uh, players such as us in PESA, we're opening up our ecosystem. So as new technology comes in, uh, open APIs, um, mini programs and so on, and, and working with the fintech community. So that creates employment, that creates new opportunities uh, for, for third parties other than ourselves to, to innovate around uh, our, our customers. So I think the, the divide between rich and poor, I mean, it, it's there, but I think the main thing is to, to raise the, you know, the, the minimum wages, the, 
um, ability for, 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 for our citizens and our customers to be able to make a living um, and a decent living. We're also looking at how do we leverage our technology in healthcare, in agriculture, uh, in other areas that will actually uplift the society. And as I said, if the society is successful, then we will be successful. Man, it actually clearly shows where us as Namibia are and where the, where the world is today and where they are already planning at going for the next uh, two to three years in terms of the MBB. Uh, Namibia is actually a bit uh, having a slower ad adaptation to the, to the digital penetration in Namibia because of the population density that is spread out, the economies of scale, the cost of the implementation of technology yeah but that is actually the difference landscape which i came to see which i came to realize today uh, versus to what is happening in the third world and the first world and so on and namibia <coughs> uh, even though we we have a bit of challenges in terms of providing those uh, connectivity to those to the rural areas. Um, we also believe that if we do not, if, you, we, if we wanna meet those Millennium Development Goals and those SDGs, we need to bring those rural areas up to speed and connectivity. And we believe that if we do not uh, bring them up, we will not be able to meet them. So um, that's why it's the government of, of, of Namibia uh, has uh, put up some policies for, for in ICT that enables operators like MTC to first cover those areas. So we have now started the OID1 uh, uh, rollout where we covering at least the target is 100 percent population coverage uh, we have now reached close to 98 percent the population of namibia is close to or over 2.4 2.5 million um, so we have now we have we are about to reach those targets in terms of 3g and 2g coverage and 4g and um, we can't speak about MBB if there are limited coverage and limited connectivity in those lower uh, outskirts. So I think that the two days uh, so far has given me some glimpse of where we are and where the first world is already is and how far they are already ahead of us. We are not even uh, having a discussion about putting up 5G yet without us covering that. So what have you seen today that gives you sort of idea of what is possible in a country like Namibia, which obviously more than anything has geographical mm. difficulties to overcome? What I've seen is that we need to invest uh, so that we break the digital divide. Uh, access to devices, access to information is a bit of a challenge also. That's what I've seen. We preach uh, connectivity, but we let be we, we leave the most important component of uh, the device that enables uh, the person to enjoy the quality of service. So some of the first world countries are having an advantage of having access to those um, high tech devices than us in 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 africa but those investments has to be done okay in terms of the network and as well as the device that enables the person yeah. and you know namibia is a rich country with a delicate ecosystem yeah lots of wildlife yeah how encouraged have you been to see that huawei and i'm sure other providers of huawei is um focusing on making tech greener you know, uh, there is a dream out there that uh, we are able to sell Namibia as a preferred destination to the Western world in terms of 
coming to see the preserved ecosystem that is still intact. Uh, data can enable us to sell that image of Namibia and, and Africa. Um, by the time um, a visitor to Namibia books their services or their visiting plan to come to Namibia, we as operators should be able to enable you as a visitor by by the time you land you already have your sim card in your arrival pack and wherever you travel to to those natural uh, resorts there is uh, connectivity that is enabled you to communicate with your loved ones back and also streaming the wild habitat of namibia back to europe or from wherever the, uh, the visitor is coming from so that is the first the second part is that we also should uh, leverage on the advantage of what namibia has it is untapped natural resources the environment is uh, very ambient it means that whenever you have data streaming of those resources and showcase it to the third world or to the first world uh, people will be eager to see and be able to log on to those digital platforms to see what is happening in Namibia. They would like to see the, de the, the, the desert, the big five, the ocean, you know, our nomadic ways of living up north in Namibia and how wonderful uh, Namibia is and, and, and what Namibia is able to offer. So we, there, is a, there, is, there is opportunities for for companies like Huawei and operators to put up platforms, uh, applications that can stream, create content, sell content to the first world on what Namibia can offer. And how encouraged are you that the devices, the masks, the 5G, 4G masks, Huawei appear to be making big strides in making the energy consumption of those things yes. come down a lot, thereby not impacting Namibia's Of course, of course. Um, with the evolving of a few, few emerging uh, RRUs or base stations, is what we are call it now. Um, there, has, <coughs> there has been a, a there has been a development whereby uh, uh, it can cover far richer richer areas with low energy emission. Those uh, <coughs> equipment Huawei has produced and is now bringing up. I, mean, I believe once once one is being launched during this event, uh, we're looking forward to test it also in our environment. Uh, rolling out of, of 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 a radio access network and maintaining it is very costly because you have a large TCO and OPEX that you also have to, ma to, to maintain, to sustain, to keep that network up and, up and running because some of the areas where us as MTC has deployed our network is areas where there is a, a little or no um, uh, utility services to power our base station. So we, <coughs> we have a few solar plants, solar, uh, 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 solar uh, units on our, on, our, on our base stations and a few generators. What we would like to see is to scale down on the uh, omission of, uh, of, of, of fuel and then put up green, uh, uh, green uh, uh, energy on, on most of our sites so that at least we could contribute to the uh, uh, ecosystem and, and reduce some greenhouse omission. What have you what do you think about MBBF this year? About my opinion, I think that it's a it's wonderful opportunity okay, to see uh, with Huawei, uh, of course with Huawei, to see what's happened actually in the world, to, to, me, to update our knowledge, uh, especially about the 5G, and uh, with our team, we have uh, uh, more of them. They are uh, technical technicians or technical persons uh, in this, uh, in this uh, 4 and 5G. So I think that it's, it was a good opportunity for us.
to be updated of this information. And what was particularly interesting for you? The first one, it concerns the 5G. The second one, it concerns everything according with transit. Uh, and the, the last one, the last point, it concerns the data center. Okay? So we have we are 15 person, okay, with different dis discipline, okay. And uh, about me, I think that uh, it will be more inter more more uh, our appointment it will be for tomorrow, okay, with transit, okay. But now with 5G and uh, the second teams they are in the core another appointment. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting for us.